He has, has been healing of the sick. He's been giving sight to the blind. He's been healing all over the area, following him yeah. and listening to him. Whether he was on the side of the hill or if he was sitting in the hall of the boat. Wherever Jesus was, there would be people who would gather. And they wanted to know, what is he going to do next? I got a friend, she, she, she had an issue with blood, and, and, and do you know all she did was touch the heel of his garment and she was healed? The word got out that there were some lepers, and, 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 and they couldn't come inside of the city. They were delegated to be out in the leper camp. They couldn't come near Jesus, but they would holler out to him. And, and they said,
get some little sweet. Yes. Everything that used to keep you up at night, that used to make you toss and toss, you have a comforter, you have a friend yes. who said, come on to me.
and I spent just three weeks there, they probably do have a lot of questions. Uh -huh. Cynthia, I can imagine that if I took a crash course in theology and all I got was three weekends, I might have some questions. I know you told me about this, this man who came and he was born in a man, but you're telling me that he was actually the son of God. I've got some questions. You told me that he knew that he was going to die, but he went to the garden of Gethsemane anyway, and he waited on his own disciple to bring someone that to I got some questions. Every time he was to raise the dead, to heal the sick, to give sight to the blind, and he called on this stuff. Why didn't he just come down all the cross? I've got some questions. 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 Right. 
like that. And the problem grows as members in the congregation wow. begin to die. Wow. Now, you said they were coming back, Paul. What's happening to those who die before you return? Wow. That was one problem. The next problem was, are you sure that this thing is for me? I thought that there was something in it for me. I didn't realize that I was doing all of this for the king. Yeah. 
If you don't manage it right, Amen. Amen. you know that hurting people yeah. hurt people. Amen. You, you come to church and you wonder why, why somebody says something, the ugliest thing you ever heard, something you didn't expect to hear in the church house. And you try to figure out, I can't believe they said that. <laughs> but if they are hurting, then they may hurt you. Amen. And what we have to do is learn how to be good stewards of God's love. I'm going to tell you two things that's wrong that are real wrong and I'm almost done. Part of the problem in the church is that we pretend that you're holy when you're not. Come on. Yeah. And you pretend not to be hurt when you are. You pretend to be holy when you're not. And you pretend that you're not hurting when you are. I heard somebody say that the church is a hospital for the sick, not a museum for the saints. Come on now, Lord. If you treat the church like it's a museum for the saints, then you're going to come in here and you're going to pretend to be holy when you got issues. You're going to pretend like everything is all together when you need somebody to pray for you. Is that it's hard to get on one court. Yes, it is. 
Right. We've spent a lot of time learning how to be individual thinkers. Wow. We live in a society now where information is all around us. It's on our phones. It's on our laptops. It's on our computers at work. We turn on the radio. Everything is real time. We hear so much information, so much contradictory information. Yes. Yeah. We don't know which way is up, which way is down. We don't know who's telling the truth. Who's telling us lies? We don't know who's making sure that we're well informed or who's trying to mislead us. There's so much information out there. There was a time back when the church began, back in your beginning, way back in the 18, late 1800s, where the preacher was an educated man, one of the few educated people, and you trusted him to bring you the truth. But now you turn on the TV and the all-state man comes on and, and he has one of those really distinctive voices and, and you believe him because you've seen him play some trustworthy character right. on TV and, yeah. and he says, all-state. <laughs> You're in good hands. And, and you believe him and, and then you start to see other people selling other stuff. Yeah. And now you don't know if the preacher is just selling you like everybody else is selling you yeah. or if he's really talking about Without your permission. Without 
future, I do apologize that I didn't do better with our schedule because we usually try to honor our requests to visit by showing up in mass. So I want you to know who's here with me. I have my deacon chair, Deacon Dorsey White. He is the first probation his pastor get everywhere safe. For four and a half years now, everywhere I go, he knows. And when he knows that I'm here at home, even, even if I'm coming in from work, if he sees me, he's going to make sure I get my house safe.